Hi, I'm Brandon Kennedy, the Chief Product Officer here at Losant. Every IoT application starts with your devices and the data that those devices generate. But devices connect and report information in a lot of different ways. You then have to normalize it and then store it all so you can actually access it. This is where Losant's data and device management comes in. So let's jump into the platform and take a closer look. All right, well, what I've got open here is an overview page for a Losant application. And this is the application for our own smart office. So you can see there's a lot of uh, devices on the left with their connection status, and on the right is the real-time communication log. Uh, this log is a really uh, valuable tool for debugging and developing the application because it streams all that information coming and going from the application. Well, let's first look at a device by jumping into Betty the Orchid. So Betty is a device here in the office and it's got a moisture sensor in it that's periodically reporting its moisture level to our platform so we can make sure to keep it watered. If we scroll down a little bit, we'll see what's probably the most important part of a device, which are the attributes. The attributes control what kind of information will be recorded onto this device. And this one has two, one for the moisture and one that keeps track of whenever it was watered. If we go down a little bit more, we'll see the device tags. Device tags allow us to organize or group devices by custom tag information. So in this case, we've tagged it location uh, with Julia's desk. If we scroll back up to the top, we'll see some other options for the device, additional debugging capabilities. Uh, we can export and delete all the information for device, but let's jump into the simulator. The simulator is a really valuable tool when it comes to early development of your Losan applications. Because using the simulator, we can actually connect the browser itself as the device in order to simulate information before we have actual hardware or real sensors sending that data. This allows us to test our notifications and test our other application logic before we have that real data. So the next thing I want to show is a data table. So within Losant, there's really two core ways we store information. One is on those device attributes we just talked about, and the other is a data table. Data tables provide a way to store completely custom information alongside your device data that might be related to your application. So in our smart office, we've got two data tables, a maintenance log and the inventory of all of our company swag. So let's jump into the maintenance log and see an example of a data table. This data table has two columns, an action and a device. The action represents what maintenance has been performed and the device is what device we did that maintenance on. The other two columns, created and updated, are done automatically by Losant to keep track of when these rows were added and modified. If I click on a row, I can edit its information, and I can also add new rows using the button on the top right. If I go into this table, we can see some of its configuration. Like I said, this table has two columns, one for the action and one for the device. Columns can have a few different types of data, so string, number, and boolean, and you can have some constraints. So in this example, a row will not be able to be inserted into this table unless both an action and a device has been specified. So now that we've covered the two ways data is stored in Losant, let's talk a little bit about how data gets into Losant. The security tab provides a way to create the tokens and API keys that are required to authenticate your devices against either Losan's MQTT broker or our REST interface. Once those devices are connected, they can directly report that state information that includes those attributes we saw earlier. Another way to get information into Losan is by using webhooks. Webhooks provide a way to create a unique URL that you can then provide to a third-party service that it can invoke in order to send data into Losan. The other way to get data into Losant is through our integrations. Integrations are a common way to get information into Losant when using a third-party device management utility. Uh, we have options for external MQTT brokers, uh, direct connection to Google PubSub, Particle, and then Aruba Meridian for their indoor position location. So that covers Losan's data and device management. We saw that the two core ways to store data in Losan is either on device with its attributes or the data tables. And then we also saw the main ways to get data into Losan, which is directly through our MQTD broker, our REST interface, uh, an integration using webhooks, or one of our direct streaming integrations to external third-party services. If you'd like to learn more, I would recommend checking out our Losant University, 
which provides a deeper dive into all the functionality I've shown today. You can also check out the Losant documentation, and if you're ready to start evaluating whether or not Losant is a good fit for your company, you can jump right in and start building with our sandbox. Thank mm -hmm. you.